Good day, class. Please stand up and let's pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you, God, for this new day in my school to work and pray. Please be with me all day long in every story, game, and song. May all the happy things we do make you, our Father, happy too. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Once again, good day class. I am Teacher Jamari Maligsa, but you can call me Teacher Jim. Okay class, please sit down. Let's check your attendance and please say present if your name is called. Destiny, Alaya, Nicole, Celeste, and Anika. Okay, good job. Perfect attendance. Okay, class, I have a question for you. Who wants to dance? Okay, wow, good job. Okay, class, please stand up again and let's dance. Okay, so who knows how to dance? I'm alive, alert, away, enthusiastic. Okay, good job. So all of us know how to dance this song. Okay, are you ready, class? Let's start. Let's recall what we discussed yesterday. So anyone who can remember what we discussed yesterday? Okay, Nicole, please stand up. Okay. Okay, good job, Nicole. That was right. So class, for today's lesson, we will discuss Brunner's theory of development and his three modes of representation. We will also explore his beliefs in learning, language, and discovery and differentiate his views from those of Jane Piaget. But before we start, I want you to watch this video clip about Jerome Brunner's theory. So please sit properly and listen carefully to the video. Jerome Bruner's theory of development is based on the assumption that we learn best when we go from concrete to abstract in a three-step process. First comes hands-on action, then learning with images, and finally students transform what they've learned into language. Throughout the experience, we constantly revisit previously learned topics while teachers provide carefully structured guidance along the way, and it seems to work. In the 1980s, the Singaporean government decided to stop importing foreign textbooks and, instead, build the world's best maths curriculum from scratch. Since that time, Singaporeans study fewer concepts with greater detail, following Bruner's guideline. Before we learn how well this worked out, let's go through each step of the theory with an example. First, we learn through inactive representation. This happens in hands-on experiences, ideally with real-world applications. To divide 4 by 2, two students learn to cut a cake into four slices, so each can eat one now and bring one home later. Step 2 is iconic representation. 
We now link our memories of the experience to iconic pictures. Students are asked to draw a cake that was cut into four pieces. Last comes symbolic representation. We now use the images we internalized earlier and turn them into abstract language, such as mathematical symbols. Using a little bit of retrospection, we can easily solve the problem. This last phase is also called language-based because we are really just learning the right words and symbols to express our thoughts. The actual maths knowledge was acquired much earlier through hands-on experiences. Brunner, therefore, advocated for the use of spiral curriculum with continuous repetition of the same fundamental ideas. The curriculum is comprised of three characteristics. Students revisit the same topic at regular intervals. The complexity of the topic increases with each revisit. The new learning has a relationship with previous learning. Teachers also use scaffolding, a term coined by Brunner. Teachers do this by structuring activities based on students' existing knowledge and in a way that helps them to reach the desired learning outcome. The teacher first demonstrates the process as the student watches. Then the teacher lets the student have a go, steps back and offers support and feedback when needed. Today, by the way, Singapore's 4th and 8th graders are the world's best in both mathematics and science and Singapore's maths curriculum is copied by educators from around the world. Jerome Bruner was born blind in New York City in 1915. At age two, modern medicine restored his vision. Later, he returned the favor by becoming a pioneer in cognitive development. He believed that any subject can be taught in an intellectually honest form to any child at any stage of development. What do you think about Bruner's theory and his suggestion for better learning? Is this how you learn in your studies? If not, what is one subject that you think could be made more understandable by following his ideas? If you like this video and the way we explain the subject, subscribe to our channel. We try to explain complex subjects in simple language and cartoons to support students all around the world in their learning. If you want to support us, you can go to www.patreon.com sprouts and donate. Just one dollar from many fans makes a big difference. Did you understand the video showed? Okay, good job. Before we discuss about Jerome Brunner's theory, let's learn first about who is Jerome Brunner. But class, did you know that Jerome Brunner lived about 101 years? Yes, that's correct. Jerome Brunner was born on October 1st, 1915 and died on June 5th, 2016 in New York City. He was an American psychologist who made important contribution to human cognitive psychology as well as cognitive learning theory in educational psychology. His learning theory focuses on modes of representation and he introduced the concept of discovery learning and spiral curriculum. He created this theory of development based upon the idea that the goal of education should be intellectual development. In this theory, he identified three modes of representation. What does cognitive theory or development mean? So cognitive development refers to the changes that an individual's mental apparatus undergoes due to experiences during his or her life cycle. Once distinguished between cognitive structure and function. Cognitive structure is a hypothetical mental structure that may change suddenly or gradually throughout development. One may assume that some type of mental organization 
makes it possible for young children to arrange objects in order of increasing length. And Jerome Brunner's research on children's cognitive development proposed three modes of representation. And these are the three modes of representation. Inactive representation based on action, iconic representation based on images, symbolic representation based on language. This mood of representation are ways you must store and encode knowledge or information in the memory. Brunner's moods are only loosely sequential. Inactive, 0 to 1 years old. This mode involves encoding action based information for storage in our memory. An infant recalls shaking a rattle by developing a muscular memory of the task. Infants and adults recall a task via muscular memory. For instance, miming or operating a loan mower is much quicker and easier than the complex verbal explanation. For example, a baby shakes a rattle and hears a noise. The baby has directly manipulated the rattle and the outcome was a pleasurable sound. In the future, the baby may shake his hand even if there is no rattle, expecting his hand to produce the rattling sounds. The baby does not have an internal representation of the rattle and, therefore, does not understand that it needs the rattle in order to produce the sound. Iconic, 1 to 6 years old. This is the ability to store a mental picture in the mind's eye. When learning a new topic, it can be helpful to use pictures and diagrams to support verbal explanations. For example, a child drawing an image of a tree or thinking of an image of a tree would be representative of this stage. Symbolic, 7 years old and above. This more sophisticated mode is the last to develop and is more flexible than the previous two modes. Mostly via the medium of language, information is stored using codes and symbols. Such symbols can be manipulated, sorted, classified, etc. So the learner is not restricted to using only action or images. Data storage is accomplished via words, mathematical signs, and or other symbol systems. For example, the word dog is a symbolic representation for a single class of animal. Symbols, unlike mental images or memorized action, can be classified and organized. In this stage, most information is stored as word mathematical symbols or in other symbols system. Hello class, uh, I am Brian Misa, but you can call me Teacher Bright. Today I will discuss and continue the topic about Jerome Brunner's theory and his belief about learning. The importance of language. Language is important for the increased ability to deal with abstract concepts. Brunner argues that language can code stimuli and free an individual from the constraints of dealing only with appearances and also to provide a more complex yet flexible condition. Use of words can aid the development of the concepts they represent and can remove the constraint of the here and now concept. Brunner views that infant as an intelligent and active problem solver from birth with intellectual abilities basically similar to those of the amateur adult. Educational implications. The aim of education should be to create autonomous learners. So for Brunner, um, the purpose of education is not to import knowledge, but instead to facilitate a child's thinking and problem-solving skills, which can be transferred to a range of situations. Specifically, education should also develop symbolic thinking in children. In 1960, Brunner's text, the process of education was, was published. 
the main premise of Bruner's text was that students are active learners who construct their own knowledge. The spiral curriculum. Bruner adapts a different views and beliefs. And according to him, a child is capable of understanding complex information. And according also to some hypotheses, that any subject can be taught effectively in some intellectually honest form to any children at any stage of development. Bruner explained how this was possible through the concept of spiral curriculum. This involved information being structured so that complex idea can be taught at a simplified level first, then revisited at more complex levels later on. Therefore, subjects would be taught at level of gradually increasing difficulty, hence the spiral analogy. Ideally, teaching his way should lead to children being able to solve problems by themselves. Readiness. Bruno opposed the Piaget notion of readiness. He argued that schools waste time trying to match the complexity of subject material to a child's cognitive stage of development. This means that students are held back by teachers Certain topics are being too difficult to understand and must be taught when the teachers believe that children has reached the appropriate stage of cognitive maturity. Discovery Learning Brunner proposes that learners construct their own knowledge and do this by organizing and categorizing information using a coding system. Brunner believed that the most effective way to develop a coding system is to discover it rather than being told by the teacher. The concept of discovery learning implies that students construct their own knowledge for themselves. The role of the teacher should not be to teach information by rote learning, but instead to facilitate the learning process. This means that a good teacher will design lessons that help students discover the relationship between bits of information. To do this, a teacher must give students the information they need but without organizing for them. The use of the spiral curriculum can aid the process of discovery and learning. Brunner held the following beliefs regarding learning and education. He believed that curriculum should foster the development of problem-solving skills through the process of inquiry and discovery. He believed that subject matter should be represented in terms of child's way of viewing the world. The curriculum should be designed so that the mastery of skills leads to the mastery of still more powerful ones. He also advocated teaching by organizing concepts and learning by discovery. Finally, he believed culture should shape notions through which people organize their own view of themselves and others and the world in which they live. Difference between Brunner and Piaget Obviously, there are similarities between Piaget and Brunner, but an important difference is that Brunner's modes are not related in terms of which presuppose the one that precedes it. While sometimes one mode may be dominant in usage, they coexist. Brunner states that what determines the level of intellectual development is the extent to which the child has been given appropriate instruction together with practice or experience. So the right way of presentation and the right explanation will enable a child to grasp a concept usually only understood by an adult. His theory stresses the role of education and the adult. Although Brunner proposes stages of cognitive development, he doesn't see them as representing different separate modes of thought and different points of development. Like Piaget, instead he sees a gradually development of cognitive skills and techniques into more integrated adult cognitive techniques. Okay, class, let's have a class recap. Who is Jerome Brunner? Anyone? Okay, Anika, please stand up. Okay, very good. 
So Jerome Brunner is an American psychologist who made important contribution to human cognitive psychology, as well as cognitive learning theory in educational psychology. Inactive, iconic, and symbolic are the three modes of representation of cognitive development of Jerome Brunner. Inactive is based on action, iconic is based on images, and symbolic is based on language. The importance of language is to increase ability to deal with abstract concepts. While educational implication is to aim that education should be to create autonomous learners. The spiral curriculum is involved information being structured so that complex ideas can be taught at a simplified level first and then revisited at more complex levels later on. Readiness means students are held back by teachers as a start, certain topics are deemed to develop difficult to understand and must be taught when the teacher believes the child has reached the appropriate stage of cognitive maturity. Discovery learning is a proposal that learners construct their own knowledge and do this by organizing and categorizing information using coding system. And that's all for today's discussion class. Okay class, I have some announcement and I posted some tasks and assignment. So for the task, after this class discussion, I want you to answer the assessment task located at the description below. Click the Google form to answer the test. And for the assignment, in a Microsoft Word, identify and explain the Jerome Brunner's theory about the three modes of presentation. Identify the three modes of representation. Explain each mode of representation. And give at least one example in each mode. So do you have any question? If not, please stand up and let's pray. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Lord, thank you for the blessings this home. Thank you for teaching us to love one another and to love you above all things. Thank you for taking care of us. And please guide us on our way as we go home. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.